beautiful smallmouth. Today on Fish Den 365, it's all about blade baits. So today, it's all about blade baits. We're going to talk about all the different fish species that blade baits catch. We're going to cover in depth about blade baits today. We're going to talk about the different types of blade baits that there are. We're going to give you some modifications for making them better, how to make them better and fish better. And we're going to talk about the retrieves that you can do with blade baits, the different types of retrieves to trigger strikes, and some different ways in general on how to fish a blade bait. So let's get started. So blade baits catch just about every species of freshwater fish that I can think of. I've caught crappies, perch, bluegills, trout, smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, northern pike, muskie, catfish, catfish. <laughs> stripers, hybrid stripers, you name it, they can be caught on blade baits. They're in a very effective bait to use when that water gets into the mid 50 degree range, that's when blade baits begin to shine. They get better as the water goes down through the 40s and they're just as good when the water's in the 30s. You can still catch quite a few fish on a blade bait in 37, 38 degree, even colder water. It's uh, really an interesting bait to fish and the winter is the prime time to be fishing it. Blade baits also happen to catch some of the largest specimens of the fish that I've just mentioned. Here's some video and pics of some of my best fish catches throughout the years with blade baits. Time to talk about some of the different blade baits that are available on the market. So I did a little checking on the history of blade baits and found that the Head and Sonic was the first blade bait. It came out in 1957. But blade bait popularity didn't really grow until Paul Buddy Banks came out with the Silver Buddy in 1983. That's when blade bait fishing began. And the Silver Buddy has caught many, many fish over those years. It's the gold standard in fishing blade baits. Here's a silver buddy right here. This is a quarter ounce version. And here's a half ounce version without the hooks. You'll notice that uh, I put a decal on the half ounce version to look, give it a scale effect. So it looks like scales. Just something to make it look a little more realistic. Now you'll notice that both of these blade baits have split rings and hooks, but Silver buddies don't come that way. They just come with a hook directly attached to the metal. The hook actually splits up the middle and it comes directly attached to the metal. This is one of the modifications that you must do when you're fishing a blade bait. Make sure you get rid of those hooks. They're junk. They will fail you. And make sure you add small split rings and better hooks. I recommend Gamakatsu EWGs. That's my favorite hook for these blade baits. And I like to use split rings. Without the split ring, if that hook is just on the metal without a split ring, it could, it could actually wedge a fish off. It doesn't have this freedom of motion. See how that can move all around in all different directions? Without that split ring on there, it can't. And so fish can actually wedge off the bait when you're trying to land them. So that's why it's important to put split rings on. Now the downside of putting split rings on and adding the hooks this way is that the hooks dangle a little more, they hang down a little more, and you're a little more likely to hang up on some items like wood and, and this kind of thing. So you're going to lose blade baits. When you're fishing these, you have to count on losing some if you're fishing in cover. If you're fishing on a hard rock bottom, you won't lose very many at all. But if you're fishing on a bottom that's snaggy, that's got large rocks, small rocks, or 
Uh, probably the biggest thing about blade baits is timber. They do not fish well in timber or any kind of fallen trees, that kind of thing. They tend to hang up in there very, very easily. So uh, something to consider and remember when you're fishing blade baits. But just take a bunch of them because if you lose some, you're going to want to put another one on because these things really do catch fish in cold water. Well, since the Silver Buddies come out, nearly everybody's come out with their own blade baits now. There's just a ton of them available. I'm going to go over a few of my favorites with you next, but it certainly is not all of the blade baits that are out there, and you might have your favorites, and I hope you do. And if you watch this video and you have some favorites that I haven't mentioned in the video, please comment and put in your favorites. I'd love to see what uh, what else is working for people out there, and we can share it with the with the people that use my channel. So the first blade bait, and you'll notice that all the ones I'm going to show you that have hooks on them, I've put split rings on them so that uh, they'll, they're ready to fish. Now, depending on the size and configuration of the blade bait, I use anywhere from a number six hook to a number two hook. Most of the time it's number six and number fours though. And because anything bigger than a four, this, this kind of thing tends to happen. And you don't want that while you're retrieving the bait. Um, because it just tangles the, up and it doesn't fish right and it, it's just it doesn't feel the same way it doesn't work the same way so you want to have those hooks uh, able to free swing but not always catching each other this one's called a Binsky blade a Binsky vibrating blade and it's very popular among fishermen in, in the area where I fish in the Northeast uh, it's not one of my favorite blades personally I just haven't done that well with it I fished it uh, on occasion but I haven't given it a really good test but it, it, it is a blade bait that is very popular today and a lot of people swear by it. This is another blade bait by Hedden. It's called a Hedden Sonar. And this one's configured such that the eyes are actually rattles. Listen to this. So it actually has rattles in it and I've done quite well with this particular blade bait. Uh, for whatever reason, crappies really seem to like this one. So I do well with crappies, but it catches everything. Largemouth bass quite well too. So the head and sonar is always a good one to go with. And you can get them with rattles or without. If it, if it doesn't have rattles, it won't have those bulging eyes. I think I have a smaller one in my box somewhere here. Here's one. So here's a perch colored head and sonar and you can see no rattles in this one, but I love that color. Saving that for a rainy day. Here's one that's made by Cabela's. It's called a Cabela's Mean Eye Blade. It's got that mean looking eye on it, and I like this particular color with the, the red. And it used to be that in blade bait fishing, you know, gold and silver were about the only options, but now uh, they have different uh, paint jobs and all different colors available depending on whose blades you're buying. You can see this one I put a number six hook in the back and number four in the front. And uh, that one balances well with this one. I think this is a three quarter ounce, uh, but they make smaller ones. Here's this one I think is a half ounce or three eighths ounce. And you can see that I chose, because of the way this one's configured, this is another Cabela's Mean Eye blade. I just used a, just one hook on it. Uh, yeah, there's really, the way this is configured, there's no hook I can put on the back that won't tangle with that one on the front. So I just use one hook and hope that the fish that I'm catching are just gonna engulf the, the blade and I'll hook them that way. Here's another blade bait I've been hearing a lot of good things about called a steel shad. And these are configured a little differently. They're a little bigger for their size. This one's probably about a half ounce, but they have three quarter, that's quite a bit bigger, an ounce, and they may even go bigger than that. So, but it still has that same vibration that when you lift up on the rod, and that's what makes a blade bait unique. And we'll talk about the action and, and what that feels like in a little while. Here's a couple of blade baits that I believe came from Jan's Netcraft. So I like this. This one looks just like an alewife. It's got that dark blue back with a white belly and a good fire tiger color here. Two good blades. These are small ones. I catch, I've catch. i caught a lot of rainbow trout on these blades. They seem to like this size in particular at a quarter ounce. It's a good blade bait. Definitely one of my favorite blade baits. One of the ones I fish the most is the Bass Pro Shops laser blade and it comes in a number of different colors. I like this silver look with a little bit of dark in it and the green eyes. Catch a lot of fish on that. Here's a bluish one. Here's a perch pattern. Uh, they used to have an old one, an old color that I can't find anymore. It was called Fire Tiger, but it wasn't the standard Fire Tiger color. It was much more subtle, and but that was a good color. 
the Bass Pro Shop blades, they do come with uh, split rings and hooks on them. I just changed the hooks out to EWGs. Another one of my favorites is the Damiki Vault. This is a half ounce Damiki Vault. It requires, because of its configuration, number six size hooks. And they make even a smaller vault. Here's the smaller one, a quarter ounce Damiki Vault. I just put one single hook on that. You can see it's so small, it's likely to hook whoever tries to eat it anyway, as long as the fish has some size to it. So looking at these, these blades, my two favorites by far are the Bass Pro Shops XPS Laser Blade and the Damiki Vault. The Damiki Vault has a really nice eye. It's got that large pronounced eye. The laser blades have an eye too, but the, the Vault has that bigger eye. They have a little bit of a different action from each other. My experience is that both catch fish. Uh, day in and day out, these are the two I'm usually throwing. Another modification that you may want to consider on blade baits is something that I do with spoons. And once in a while I'll do it with blade baits too. I can't say that it's that it's uh, that I have a noticeable difference in the fish catch rate, but it's difficult to say. And if it gives you more confidence, then I would suggest you do it. And that is just to take that tail hook and tie a feather to that hook. So have a feathered tail hook on the blade bait. When you do that, you don't want to put too many feathers. Just maybe two or three feathers, um, a light wrap, and and that's all you need because you don't want to deaden that vibration as the bait is being used. If you put too heavy of a hook on there. With a lot of feathers it could deaden that a little bit but just a few feathers on there gives it a tail look gives the fish just a little bit of a different look and uh, hey it might make a difference I know I've caught plenty of fish with tail feathers and without one thing I wanted to mention was how to uh, get a snag back if you snag one of these lures on a branch or something on the bottom there are a few things you can do to up your odds in getting the bait back these baits are heavy for their size, and they're front heavy usually. And, you know, this one weighs a half an ounce. Sometimes they can weigh five eighths, three quarters, or an ounce or more. And so you can use that weight to your advantage. When these hooks get hooked into something, uh, like a branch or some other type of snag, you can just literally um, tighten your line, just reel up your line, and then shake your rod tip violently. Just shake it several times. Shake, 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 stop. Shake, shake, stop, and then lift up. And oftentimes because of the weight of the bait, it'll release itself and you can get it back that way. One of the other things that I'll do is I'll shake it several times, shake it, shake it until I can see if I can get it off. And if it doesn't, then I'll use the old bow and arrow trick where you just pull the line back hard and then let go. And sometimes that'll release it too. So those are two ideas that uh, you can try and employ to get baits back. Oftentimes I get mine back that way when I snag. The other thing you can do is send a weight down your line. I usually have a two or three ounce weight a lead weight, usually it's bullet shaped, and uh, I'll attach a snap to that. I attach that snap to the line, the weight goes down and it, and it uh, bumps into the lure and releases it from the snag that way. Uh, that'll help you save some money and save some baits where you're not always having to break off and retie. So the best way I can describe the action of these baits is the feeling that you get when you lift up your rod tip. It's a jigging technique, right? Most of the time. So when you lift up your rod tip, it vibrates and you'll feel that through your rod and it, it's it feels like if I was to put a sound to it it would be brrr. some people call it burping I, I just say brrr. And, and so that's the feeling it's a real tight uh, rapid vibration and so there's a number of different retrieves that you can employ to to get fish to bite one thing about the blade bait that's related to releasing the bait from snags is when you do hook a fish on this you do want to try and get it to the boat rather quickly and you don't want the fish jumping for the same reasons the bait is heavy and it's got that uh, weight to it where if a fish's mouth comes out of the water the bait could actually uh, dislodge itself from the fish especially if he shakes his head a little bit so you want to try and keep the fish um, under the water, stop it from jumping. Usually in cold water, it's much harder for them to jump anyway, but you just put your rod down, keep pressure on the fish the entire time, reel on that fish, and get it to the boat as soon as possible. If you don't have a person there with a net, just lift it into the boat in one motion because uh, once they get to the surface, if you have any slack line at all, they can get off with baits like this. So back to the retrieve, there's a number of retrieves that you can employ. The most basic one is just to throw the lure out there. I usually use a, a shorter cast 
you know, I'll, I'll, I'll call it a half cast or even less. I'll just pitch it out in front of me. I'm not trying to break a distance record when I'm fishing these things when I'm casting. So I'll cast it out and I'll let it go to the bottom. You're watching your line the entire time. It goes to the bottom. The line goes slack. That's how you know it hit bottom. Oftentimes if the bottom's hard, you can feel that through your line, right through your rod and into your finger. I always hold the line with my finger so I can feel that. So when uh, one of the standard retrieves is just to lift up, well, you'll feel that bait go brrrr. So you're only lifting your rod six inches to a foot. The bait might be coming off the bottom a foot, maybe a little bit more. So you want, you want to feel, I'll say, several of those vibrations, like four to, four to eight of those vibrations, brrrr, and then back down again, brrrr, and then back down again. Generally, the fish will hit on the fall. There are some exceptions to that. Usually that depends on the species of fish. For example, smallmouths don't follow the rules. Many times you can get them on the fall, but just as many times I caught smallmouths while I was lifting up. And a few times after I was done with the retrieve and started to retrieve the bait up, up to the boat, back up to me, I've had smallmouths hit. You know, I might have been fishing in 25 feet of water and the bait is passing up through 10, 12 to 10 feet and I've had them eat it that way. I don't know if they're chasing it off the bottom or if they're just suspended down there. Uh, oftentimes I think it's when they're suspended and they see that thing coming up through their water, through where the water where they're sitting and then they just go and chase it and eat it. Small mouths do that. The other fish that I've sometimes caught on the lift is hybrid stripers. Sometimes they'll eat it that way too, but most of the time, most of the fish are eating it on the fall and sometimes you'll feel that. It'll be a pretty good tick or a good thump and many times you won't feel it at all. You'll just throw the bait out there, you'll lift it, brrr, it goes down, you go to lift it again and there's weight and the fish is on. You don't even feel the bite. It's as though the bait just hit the bottom and as it hit the bottom, the fish grabbed it. So just be aware of that if you have that weight, lift up and start retrieving because in many cases that's a fish. Another one of the retrieves that I like to do is, is a double uh, uh, burp, I'll call it, where you go up brrr, and then hesitate and burp again. So. So usually that'll be uh, one little uh, lift of the rod, burp, a quick pause, and burp again, a shorter burp though, and then all the way back down to the bottom, and then you can repeat that. Or you can do it the opposite way, where the first lift is a short lift, and then the second lift is more, a more pronounced one, and then let it go down to the bottom. So those are a couple, of, you just experiment with those cadences. Um, the cold of the water, generally, the slower you want this to be. So let's say the water's in the mid 50s, I might fish this rather aggressively. I might, go, I might lift that rod really high and go burp and get that thing jumping three feet, four feet off the bottom and letting it go back down, flutter back down. But as that water's getting down in the low 40s and 30s, it's just the opposite. Most of the time, I just wanna feel a few vibrations of that bait, burp, burp, and back down. So, uh, and oftentimes they'll hit it off the bottom. They'll just pick it up when it hits the bottom. The other thing that you can do, and this has worked at times where you wouldn't think it would, is, is especially if the fish are eating, you're catching some fish and then it seems to shut down or they, they don't eat it as much, try this next time that's going on. So you let the bait go to the bottom and this is, this is usually right at the boat because you can fish this right at your boat, especially if you're fishing fairly deep water, 15 feet or more. Um, you know, these, these baits catch fish in 40 feet. I've caught fish in 45 feet of water on these blade baits. I'm sure they'll catch fish if, if deeper than that if, you're, if they're deeper. But anyway, so when you're, one of the ways that you can catch fish with this is to just rise it off the bottom just a few inches, anywhere from maybe an inch or two to six inches to a foot off the bottom and just hold it there. Don't do a thing. Just hold it there and let it suspend and then, and then maybe just a little shake, just a shake of the rod tip so the thing just vibrates a little bit. And oftentimes you can trigger strikes that way. Stripers, especially hybrids, hit it that way sometimes. Uh, at least it's been my experience. So that's another type of retrieve. Another one is to really not hardly lift it off the bottom at all. In other words, the bait's on the bottom and you're just lifting it up to enough to make it do this and back down. You're, you're not uh, burping it at all. You're just moving it ever so slightly on the bottom. Sometimes that works real well. So you just have to experiment with the retrieve. If one retrieve's not working, don't give up. Try some different retrieves you might be surprised at what, uh, what a difference that'll make on certain days. So the, the really cool thing about blade baits in my mind is that, you know, in the in summertime you get to fish all different ways and you can fish fast or slow, you can cover water, 
you know, there's what we call power fishing where you're throwing spinner baits and throwing baits that you cover water quickly with. In the wintertime, you have to slow down. That's just the way that, the way it is because a bass's metabolism slows down or a fish's metabolism slows down. They're cold blooded. So, but the blade bait allows you to fish slow, fast. And what I mean by that is you can throw this thing out and because we're going after a vertical presentation now, right? So the fish is sitting somewhere in the water column. Maybe this is the bottom. He might be on the bottom. It might be up off the bottom a little bit. But we're using a vertical presentation up and down to, to, uh, to get that fish to trigger into a strike. And so you can do this, uh, you can get, uh, you can cover water pretty quickly with this technique versus say fishing with a jig or fishing with a drop shot. Uh, and so the blade bait is not always the best option to throw in the winter, but it is a great option for finding fish. You might, you might just get a couple hits on the thing. You might not catch fish, but once that happens, you know there's fish in the area and then you can slow down and fish a different way. But meanwhile, you can cover water. And one of the ways I like to do that is I'll throw the bait out there a pretty good distance. And while it's sinking, I'll move the boat towards the bait. And so I'm just covering water this way. So as it's sinking, I'm moving the boat towards the bait and I'm keeping my line taut but not tight. In other words, I'm staying in contact with that bait as I'm moving the boat forward. The bait goes to the bottom and then I, I start my retrieve. I start my vertical retrieve, brr, back down, brr, 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 however I want to do that. And then I just do that until it comes back to the boat. Usually when it's under the boat, I'm, re I'm trying jigging it a few times to see if anything's under there. Sometimes a fish will follow right to underneath the boat and that's when they'll eat. When I'm done doing that, I reel back up, I throw back out and I cover some more water. So this is a way where you can go down uh, you can pick an area, a contour line, say maybe 22 feet, and you can go down that contour line and fish a pretty good area fairly quickly and yet still cover the water and have a confidence level and a good chance of triggering, or triggering a fish vertically. And if you do, uh, whether you get a hit or whether you catch one, you could always employ other techniques then because you know there's fish there. So you can always employ a drop shot or some other type of method like a jig. So this is what this is one of the big benefits of fishing the blade bait. It gets you to the fish uh, and the and the semi-active fish a little bit quicker than a lot of the other options. The other thing that is important with blade baits is to use your electronics. You want to look around for the fish. If you see a group of fish down there, if you see a school of fish with your electronics, you know there's fish there. Try dropping the blade bait down them. Try these different techniques, these different retrieves that we talked about, and see if you can't trigger a few of them that way. And then you could always try something else to try and follow up and catch some more. But uh, so that's another way is just to go around and look for those fish. The time of this time of the year in the winter, when the water is going through the full low 40s and in the 30s, fish group up. A lot of the species that we've mentioned, they school up and they school tightly packed together. So. They're in less areas because they're not spread out, but when you find them, you usually find a school of them, a good number of them. And so this is another opportunity to start turning those, those uh, uh, fish into takers and getting them to the boat. So another, another great way to fish the blade bait or another great tool for catching those fish. Another way to fish the blade instead of casting it out at all, just let it drop right off your rod, right down into the water, and just fish right underneath you. That's another uh, perfectly fine way to catch fish, jigging it up and down. It catches fish that way too, especially if you found them on your finder and you want to be over them and you want to be able to see. You know, today's finders, you drop that down underneath your transducer, you're going to see your blade bait. You'll be able to see it going up and back down and you can see how the fish are reacting to it. So another, another way of fishing uh, the blade bait in the winter time to catch these fish. Well, I sure hope you found this video helpful and I hope it inspires you to get out in the winter. If you're not an angler that uh, goes out in cold water, you're actually missing some good opportunities to catch some of the biggest fish of the year. The reason for that isn't because the fish are very active, they're not, but they're vulnerable still because there's less pressure on the water, there's less people fishing for them, there's less boats, there's just a lot less activity. And so some of these biggest fish, if you can find them, become a little more vulnerable in the winter time. So, I hope it inspires you to get out there, give it a try. Blade baits are one of the best baits you can throw in the winter. Spoons go right along with that. Obviously drop shots and some others, but this is a mainstay for cold water fishing. Get out there and try it and enjoy it. Remember though, be safe in cold water. It kills. If you fall in that water, you don't have long uh, to get out and 
to get dry and warm before you're in big trouble. So wear your PFD when the winter time, when that, once that water's in the 50s, I wear my PFD all the time because I don't want to take the risk of falling in. Uh, you can watch video on this. You could even do a little controlled test to see how your body reacts in cold water. But I know that if you fall in that water and you don't have the PFD on and all your attention has to go into staying afloat, your chances are not nearly as good as if you have your PFD on because once you fall in that water, it's a shock. It's a shock to your system. And one of the first things that happens is it makes you gasp for air. It makes you suck in air. And if you don't have the PFD keeping you afloat and you're under the water and you suck that in and suck water in, you're already behind the eight ball. So stay safe out there. Enjoy the winter. Please share this video. Make sure if you liked it, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Can't wait to do the next video for you, so keep it locked here to see the next one. And may God bless your fishing endeavors, and we'll see you on the water.